of the Paycheck Fairness Act. Um, we are here today because women continue to experience challenges in the workforce. Over the course of the pandemic, millions of women left the workforce. They were pushed out. They didn't opt out of the workforce. But these women, uh, uh, they, and they were pushed out because of inadequate policies. While many women have been able to regain employment, a clear disparity still exists. Women only hold 85,000 more jobs now than in February 2020, compared to men who hold 429,000 more jobs now than they did in February 2020. And when the women re-enter the workforce, they are paid less than men. As more and more American families rely on women's income, we know that the pay gap hurts not only women, but the families who depend on them. Single women who are postponing marriage or foregoing it altogether are a growing economic force, which accounts for a larger share of growth in the job market. As outlined by a very recent report, which was on uh, uh, on CNN this morning about more single women uh, in, the, uh, in, in the workforce. And we're gathered today in, in the Barbara Mikulski room, the longest serving woman in the Congress, uh, uh, who I had the pleasure of introducing Paycheck Fairness with all these years ago. Um, and Barbara, in her words, was, quote, the dean of the Senate women. And I want to particularly say a thank you to another trailblazer and a force of nature, I might add, and perhaps the new dean of the Senate women. So uh, a dear, dear friend and colleague, Senator Patty Murray. Um, since day one of her time in the Senate, Senator Murray has understood that if you want change, that you have to fight for it. Um, and that is exactly why she is here today, and she continues this fight for Paycheck Fairness for Women. Um, not going to be easy. The Paycheck Fairness Act has passed the House four times, most recently April 2021. Year in and year out, a majority of Republicans in both the House and Senate, for some reason they simply cannot get on board with what is common sense legislation, uh, and it is about doing the right thing. Men and women in the same job deserve the same pay. It's outrageous. And sadly, it is women who bear the consequences of the inaction. In equality for women in the workplace should not be a partisan issue. And this is where our advocates uh, come in as well. Melvina Ford, the National Legal Director at uh, Equal Rights Advocates. Galen Burroughs, Director of Workplace Equality at the National Women's Law Center. Sharita Gruberg, Vice President in Economic Justice at the National Partnership for Women and Families. What partners, and we're fortunate, Senator, with great, great, wonderful, strong partners in this fight for paycheck fairness. Um, and the Senator and I have introduced paycheck fairness in every Congress since 1997. Throughout the years, we have pushed, we've battled to strengthen the Equal Pay Act of 1963, which made it illegal for employers to pay unequal wages to men and women who perform essentially the same work. The Equal Pay Act, the civil rights laws that followed helped to change the workplace and finally begin to combat wage inequality. But the laws have not closed what is a persistent gap in between women's and men's wages. Long overdue to eliminate this pay discrimination, which is why we're here today. We'll introduce the bill later today, uh, and we need to um, really emphasize how central this is and its impact on all working families. Next Tuesday, which is March 14th, is Equal Pay Day. The date symbolizes how far into the year women must work to earn what men earned in the previous year. It is a day that illustrates the gap between men and women's wages. Um, 77 cents on the dollar. Uh, it, it, it persists and it continues. It's a gap of nearly $12,000 each year. Uh, and discrimination in the workplace is real uh, almost six decades after the passage of the Equal Pay Act. Women of color uh, have a worse experience. Compared to white men, black women are paid 64 cents. Latino women are paid 54 cents. Native American women are paid 51 cents. And Asian American and Pacific Islander women are paid as little as 80 cents. So for women working full time, year round, the gap represents a loss of more than $400,000 over the cost of their careers. 
Uh, it impacts women's ability to save for retirement. It reduces their total Social Security and pension benefits, contributing to more older women today who live in poverty. And you know, we've had presidents like uh, uh, Dwight Eisenhower and, and President Kennedy, all of whom have said that we need to be dealing with the principle of equal pay for equal work. Um, and uh, we have, and they made promises in this vein as well, and now it's up to us to make good on those promises. So to the advocates who are here today, we just say to you, we enlist your help. And you all know that the Congress, both House and Senate, uh, responds to external pressure. And we're counting on you, the external pressure. And we always say this, you know, we don't ever give up. We can see that we've been at this for a while, but we're not going to take no for an answer. So thank you all very, very much. And with that, please um, welcome uh, not just a colleague, but a dear friend and a co-conspirator, uh, <laughs> Senator Patty Murphy. Senator. Well, thank you so much, Rosa, for being my partner in this, for all your energy and enthusiasm and continue to do this. And I do feel BAM in this room. She, <laughs> she is still out there, still active, still pushing, and I know she it would be excited to know we're here today. Um, the simple fact of the matter really is that women are getting shortchanged, and they have been for a really long time. The Equal Pay Act was actually signed into law over 50 years ago, and the Lilly Ledbetter Pay Act was signed into law 14 years ago. And still, women are being paid less than their male counterparts, and the gender pay gap has barely budged in two decades. You know, Rosa and I have had to hold the same press conference as she referenced way too many times, but we're going to keep coming back because today women in the U.S. on average are paid only 77 cents on the dollar compared to men. And the gap for, is far greater for women of color. Black women are paid just 64 cents compared to white men, Latina women 54 cents, and Asian American and Pacific Islander women paid as little as 80 cents for every dollar their white male counterparts make for the same job. And employers are still able to brush off reports of pay discrimination with really flimsy excuses like, well, he was a better negotiator, or those guys were paid more money previously, as if that had anything to do with it. So let's be clear. We may say 77 cents on the dollar, but we aren't just talking about pennies here. We are ultimately talking about huge, life-changing amounts of money that women are not getting paid because of a system of laws that lets their employers take advantage of them. Because we know when a woman is paid less today, the damage to her economic security can stretch far into the future. Getting paid less than your counterparts hour after hour, year after year, really adds up. And when you're paid less now, that disparity often carries over to your next job because salary history is too often used to determine your future pay. So no matter what your counterparts are making or your new responsibilities. And let's not forget inequities like investments compound over time. Over the course of a career, the wage gap robs women of hundreds of thousands of dollars in wages and in retirement savings. For some women of color, it can ultimately cost them over a million dollars. Women are literally paying the price of inaction and the cost is sky high. So we have to put a stop to these practices for good. That's why I'm proud to be here with Rosa today to reintroduce the Paycheck Fairness Act alongside every Democrat in the U.S. Senate today. This bill will take some common sense, step, common sense steps to close the loopholes that allow pay discrimination to continue. It will protect workers from retaliation for talking about their pay. It will limit the use of prior wage history in the hiring process so discrimination cannot follow workers from job, job to job. And it will increase transparency and accountability so workers know they are being paid fairly and can hold their employers accountable if they are not. You know, this just shouldn't be controversial. In fact, the bill passed the House last Congress with bipartisan support. So my message today to everyone is let's make this Congress where we finally get this long overdue bill passed into law. I gotta tell you, women are sick of being shortchanged. They deserve better. They deserve equal pay and we're gonna keep fighting until they get it. And with that, I am proud to turn it over to Melvina. Thank you so much. 
Good morning. I am honored to follow Senator Murray and Representative DeLauro. Um, thank you for continuing to hold this press conference year after year until this, this fight gets done. Um, but not only have you been champions for the Paycheck Fairness Act, but you have both been champions for many laws over the years that have sought to guarantee equal rights for women in America. Uh, again, my name is Melvina Ford, and I'm the National Legal Director at Equal Rights Advocates. ERA is a national uh, gender justice organization that fights for the advancement of rights and opportunities for women, girls, and people of all gender identities. The experience of the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us many lessons. Chief among those lessons, though, is the critical role that women play in running this country. When we stay home, things shut down. Yet women, and particularly women of color, continue to be paid less than men across industries and occupations, and that's even in occupations that are dominated by women. We must strengthen the Equal Pay Act of 1963 to fulfill its original promise and ensure that people are paid equally for equal work. In California, ERA has led efforts to pass laws implementing many of the protections that are in the Paycheck Fairness Act, including barring retaliation for discussing pay, ensuring that employers can only rely on legitimate, non-sex-based factors that are a business necessity to justify differences, and prohibiting employers from relying on salary history to set pay. And meanwhile, California has not fallen off the cliff with, this, with these laws. These are common sense policy fixes that will advance the cause of pay equity for women. Now more than ever, it is critical that women are treated fairly and equitably in the workplace. We need a law that will dismantle the pervasive pay discrimination that we continue to see and which continues to be harmful to women and their ability to support their families. So we thank you so much for coming out today to help us in joining to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act. And I want to turn it over to my colleague, Galen Burroughs. Good morning. I'm Galen Burrows. I'm the Director of Workplace Equality at the National Women's Law Center, and I want to thank uh, Senator Murray and Congresswoman DeLauro for their tireless work on behalf of women and families and for the reintroduction of the Paycheck Fairness Act. This year marks the 60th anniversary of the Equal Pay Act, which made it illegal for employers to pay unequal wages to men and women who perform substantially equal work. And although enforcement of the Equal Pay Act and other civil rights laws has helped to narrow the wage gap, significant disparities remain, and action to update the law is needed urgently. You've heard the numbers. When we compare the median earnings of all women who work, regardless of how many hours or weeks they work, women are paid just 77 cents for every dollar paid to men. For a woman working full-time year-round, the wage gap adds up to a loss of nearly $400,000 over the course of a 40-year career. And women of color are hit the hardest. Compared to white, non-Hispanic men, black women stand to lose more than $900,000, and Latinas and Native women would lose more than a million dollars over the course of their careers. This is life-changing money that could be used to help make ends meet, to pay for education, to invest in a home, or to save for retirement. We all want to be paid fairly, yet the work that women do, often the work that makes up the backbone of our economy, is consistently undervalued and underpaid, contributing to a wage gap that is barely budged in the last decade and that continues to exist in almost every occupation. The Paycheck Fairness Act would strengthen the Equal Pay Act and provide new tools to help ensure fair pay and fight discrimination. State legislatures are already doing their part. Several states have now prohibited employers from relying on applicant salary history to set pay, a practice that allows pay discrimination to follow women from job to job. Other states have tightened legal loopholes that allowed employers to get away with paying women less. And because pay discrimination thrives in secrecy, states and localities have passed laws to bring pay practices to light through pay data reporting, laws to protect employees' right to talk about how much they make, and even laws requiring employers to provide salary ranges in job postings. Common sense. But where you live shouldn't determine what protections are available to you. That's why Congress must do its part to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act, and women shouldn't have to wait any longer for equal pay. I'd like to turn it over to Sharita. Thank you so much, Galen. It is an honor to be in this fight with you, and Malvina, and also cannot express enough my gratitude to Senator Murray and Representative DeLauro for your years of leadership on this. 
as it was said, since the passage of the Equal Pay Act in 1963, it's been illegal to pay uh, unequal wages to men and women for substantially um, equal work. But as you've heard again and again, the wage gap persists, particularly for women of color, at a cost to our economy of nearly $1.6 trillion every year in lost wages for working women. The National Partnership for Women and Families, where I have the honor to serve as the Vice President of Economic Justice, has been fighting for equal pay for women for nearly its entire existence. And that's why I am here today to applaud the reintroduction of the Paycheck Fairness Act. In the years since the Equal Pay Act became the law of the land, it's clear that workers, employers, and enforcement agencies need the tools that the Paycheck Fairness Act provides to combat pay discrimination. The wage gap, as we've heard, is more than numbers. I'm sure you've heard in the past how long it takes women to catch up to men, but as Galen said, with those huge numbers, we know it is impossible to catch up. These lost wages make the strain that women are facing every day supporting ourselves and our families even higher at a time when rents and essential items for our households are skyrocketing. Pay discrimination makes it harder for women to cover our daily expenses, much less to save for our futures. The money that women lose from the wage gap adds up. Without the wage gap, on average, black women working full-time year-round would have enough money for more than two years of childcare, or nearly 19 months of rent payments, or nearly three years of groceries, and that's just one year of the wage gap being um, addressed. For Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander women, the losses are also bleak. I'm a Bangladeshi American, and we are at the lower end of the median wages when you disaggregate by race, which you should always do when you're talking about ANHPI folks. We are missing out on 12 additional months of childcare, or nine months of rent, or a whopping 27 months of groceries. Women cannot afford to wait anymore, and neither can our economy. It is time to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act and make pay discrimination history. And with that, I will turn the mic over back to our House champion, Representative DeLauro. Yeah. I was just going to say, do you have anything else to say? Or if not, if we have any questions, I suggest we get our picture all in front of Barbara. Oh, my God. And I will text it to her. Yeah, please. Oh, my God. She will love it. All right. Anybody else want to say anything? Our friends here? Do you want to? And they come. Just thank you. Okay, yeah. no, thank all of you. You know, right. you're the wind beneath our wings here. You okay. get the word out. So let's do our photograph. Any questions from press or anything like that? No? Okay, all right, please. Okay, here we go. Come on. 